So I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I just got done talking to my girlfriend Allison about. And that is uh, spiritual and creative blockages. And this is a subject that tends to come up a lot. And it's one that uh, she had brought up on our podcast that we do together, Southwind Charm, which you can find on SoundCloud. Um, but it was just so interesting and I really wanted to talk to you guys about it. So what I mean by like spiritual and creative blockages is whenever you're feeling really blah and you're having a hard time doing anything, even though there are things that you want to do in your spiritual practice or um, creatively that you want to do, but you just can't find the inspiration or the motivation to get it done. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed my last few videos, you can kind of see, I've talked to you guys about my mental health before, and I do have, uh, I do kind of go up and down in my moods a lot. In the last few videos, you could probably tell where I'm kind of slightly on like a downward uh, like decline as far as my mood, and that always really affects my, my drive when it comes to getting things done in my spiritual practice especially, but also in my uh, creative practice with my art and everything. It can be especially difficult to find the motivation or even the energy. Uh, usually I get really tired at those times and I have to just kind of rest a lot and just do what I can, which is why like the last few videos I put out were just kind of weird random bits and bobs of what I've been doing because I was having a really low energy period, which it's fine. It's come back up now and I'm really excited about that and I feel much better. So just so you guys know how I'm doing. But I've noticed the older that I've gotten and the more that I've had to deal with spiritual downtime and especially the more I've had to deal with creative blockages, which has really helped me in my uh, spiritual life as well, is that a lot of times um, we tend to be blocked or speaking from my personal experience, because of something that has happened in the past that we have left unfinished or something that we've done um, that we were last working on that didn't really work out the way that we planned to. And I feel like because this, if you're doing a spell or something and you're really excited about it and it doesn't turn out the way that you want, it can be incredibly uh, discouraging. And that's kind of what led to my um, like six month hiatus is because I had been doing a lot of work um, to improve our lives and just nothing, nothing worked. Absolutely nothing worked out. And because of that, I had a extended like an exceptionally long period of time where I just had absolutely zero motivation. So the beginning of this year, um, I decided to, you know, take the reins again and give it another try. And this has been such a wonderful learning experience for me. And like I said, even in my art process, I found that I, whenever I take the most time off and have the hardest time working, uh, like through artist block, I guess you would say, is whenever I've halfway finished a piece and I really hate it and I really like I fucking hate it and I feel like it looks terrible so I just stop working on it entirely or even if I'm working on a piece that I enjoy but you know it's taking a really long time and I just kind of lost momentum on it so I found that some of the best way to gain that momentum back is to pick up that project or go back and re-examine what it is that you left off on that kind of put you off in the first place. And for me, the, one of the more important things um, before even re-examining my previous projects is to just like meditate some. And I think that that's a word that people use a lot, but I also think it's a word that it's easier said than done because making time for a meditation practice it's kind of aggravating. It is kind of hard. And, you know, I applaud anyone who has, you know, a practice, a meditation practice that happens every single day. Like, you're a fucking champ. Because sometimes for me, the noise and chatter, it's, it's so hard to escape the, like, noise and chatter of life, even to get away for a few minutes to meditate. But generally, if I just really force myself to like sit down and shut the fuck up for a minute, it brings so much more clarity and f 
focus to what I have at hand. I'm sorry, my mother's dog is being an asshole. So once I'm able to find that like zen, focused, you know, inner like peace and stillness inside me, it makes it a lot easier for me to look at what it is I left off on, realize you know, why I left it the way it was, why I left something unfinished, or like why I didn't like the way it worked out, and then just basically problem solve so that I can move on. And generally, I either, if it's a piece of artwork, which is a really easy way to talk about this, but um, it also definitely applies to spiritual practices as well. But if it's a piece of artwork that I think turned out crappy, then I will, I'll try and redo it, but in a different way. So um, if you're familiar with the Atropos uh, painting that I did with the hands, the I had first started out, I wanted to do a like full body of um, Atropos, and God, it just looked like total utter shit. But I finished that drawing, like I didn't stop halfway through, I finished that drawing, even as hard as it was, and I always like to make notes to myself, like this looks like fucking shit in my sketchbook, but that's for me and that makes me feel better. But I finished it and then I tried it a different way. And I literally took it from an entirely different angle. You know, I zoomed in on what was important in the piece to me, which was the essence of Atropos is her like literally holding like the thread of life and having the power to decide when to snip that thread. By kind of zooming in and putting that under my own little microscopic lens, I came up with something that was a hundred times better and had, you know, so much more emotion and feeling than my original uh, concept. And that's kind of how I handled my last um, spiritual blockage as well. You know, I... I can't exactly remember what happened. I think it happened in the shower because, you know, everything, all great ideas come to you in the shower. But I just kind of ended up like giving myself a pep talk and be like, you're a fucking witch. You can handle this. Like call on like every fucking spirit you know, every deity you know, and like let's get this shit done. And that's what I did. And I put everything I had into that work, you know, trying to move forward. And it fucking worked. And, you know, despite how awful I had felt about uh, failing in the past, um, I guess that that's also a lesson that I needed to learn, too. Because, I mean, if, I, if everything had worked out great and we had been able to move on with our lives at that point, then I would have missed out on, like, this huge learning experience. And... I just, I think it's really important to, whenever you're having a hard time or you feel like you're failing, to realize that there is something to be learned from that. And there's a reason that you've stopped. There's a reason that things have stopped moving forward, or it seems like they've stopped moving forward. And it's because you need to examine a piece of your life that needs extra attention or that needs to be looked at in a different way. And this is, you know, a lot of people call this shadow work. And um, that's that's how I feel about it. But most of the time when it's happening, I don't really realize that it's happening. But after I finished it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I had, you know, a bit of shadow work to do. Because um, for me, like intentionally doing shadow work is something that is kind of difficult. And it doesn't because it doesn't really arise unless there is, you know, a problem that you're having or a conflict at the time. And Generally, myself, when I'm in a conflicted state of mind, it's hard for me to be subjective to what's happening at the time. Like, it takes me a little bit longer, I think, to um, have that, uh, I'm sorry, objectivity to the situation. So, I just wanted to say that to maybe help anyone else out there that is struggling. You know, just try your best to... Be patient with yourself, number one. Take it very slowly if you need to. You don't have to force anything, but being patient and, you know, giving yourself the amount of um, self-care and love to slow down and examine what it is that is actually causing the blockage is really important. And it is incredibly helpful to, to get you through those periods. And sometimes, you know, 
And sometimes it can be stuff that you need worked on, but sometimes you might just be really fucking busy. You know, sometimes you might just have a lot of work going on or you might have so much going on that it's hard to feel centered and focused. So just try to, you know, try to just center, do some meditation, take it slowly and do things one step at a time and that will get you through. But thank you all for listening to me. I hope you enjoy this and please let me know what you think about it and what you find helpful when dealing with, um, you know, downtime and blockages. And if you feel similar or if you feel like the total opposite about this, let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Bye.